B Frank Network. Welcome back, everyone, to a very special season eighty-seven and a half、uh, of Happy Never After. I'm your host. I'm finally back, Mara Merrick. Now engaged, eight times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, eight. eight I don't want to. It's episode two twenty-five. Episode two hundred twenty-five.、Uh, season fresh start. And I am Mara Merrick, and I am ho- joined by the one and only, my ride or die, Marshall Grupp. Welcome. Hi. Well, where you been, man? <laughs> Jesus. Fucking Texas. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, I've been in.、Uh, I've been in Texas. Funny thing, I was at work, and I was had all my luggage at the front desk, like near the front desk, and there was this, the salespeople over to the side. And salespeople at gyms are usually like white douchey dudes, and they were like, "Where are you going?" And I was like. <laughs> I'm going to New York for a day, and they're like, "Oh, cool, cool, cool." I was like, "It's where I moved from," and they go, "Well, why'd you move here?" I go, "My dead, the dead, dead Dave, <laughs> <laughs> the dead guy." <laughs> I moved here for him, and they're like, "Oh man, I'm so sorry." And I was like,、ah, "Douchey dudes, gotcha." <laughs> big Dave. So, big Dave. Yeah, big Dave. Small but big Dave. Yep.、Uh, he kept telling me that he was five eight. He was only five. Five, six and a half. So that's okay. <laughs> so you gotta tell people what's happening. Okay, so、um, you guys knew all knew I was in a relationship back、uh, back in the day when Sergio and I were very consistent, and the podcast was changing because I didn't feel right talking about breakups when I was in such a glorious relationship. It was fun. I'm gonna cry. It's okay. Like I do, I'm still crying. This is crazy. I know that、um, you can cry forever, but I feel like such a pussy. Anyway, yeah, you are a pussy. <laughs> Which really, you're not a pussy. Because I wouldn't know you because I don't dig pussies. <laughs> you're a tough chick. I am a tough chick. That's why it's so annoying that I'm still crying. It's okay, man.、Um, oh God. So. Uh, met Dave. I did a radio show. He wrote to me. You guys all know this, but I'll give you a, a bigger recap than probably necessary.、Um, this be like one of those Bravo shows. Like the first ten minutes are a recap that we all saw the last week. Anyway, I did the Anthony Cumia show. He wrote to me, and two weeks later he came. And this was during my like saliva gland stone, so my face was huge. Remember that? Oh my god! I know. <laughs> Like I know you in very specific moments in your life, your big face, or, or, <laughs> your teeth issues. <laughs> <sighs> Can I catch a break? No. So he knew me from the show, but then he saw me the, for the first time with a、uh, big face, <laughs> and he still liked me. So I was like, oh well, if he can, if he can handle this, then、uh, he's probably a good one. We dated. He moved basically moved in with me. And he also was living in Texas with someone else at the same time. Sometimes men are not the best at breaking up with people. Oh, really? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> But hold on, he came to live with you when you were up in Pennsylvania. Yeah. At your retreat up there. Yeah, at my little. He、Poconos, went into the wilderness. And... My Pocono shack, my big nature moment. The big the snow with the deer and guys、I'll... across the street. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. He stayed. He flew in. We went to a wedding because he was a day late. I was going to go to the wedding by myself. He went with me, and、uh, that was our first date. And then he stayed at my house for sixty four days. Like he had no ticket home, and he just stayed. And it was great. It was so fun. It was the best. He cooked every night. We danced. It was. He thought my dancing was hilarious, and I would sing all the time. I would make up words to songs around. I was myself. You seem very happy then. You know, happier than I'd seen you in a long time. And right now, um, yeah, I was very, very, very happy. I was. He was hot. Also, 
Like he was pretty good to look at, you know? Mm-hmm. Those fucking muscles. Good sex. Yeah. Great. He was great. Well practiced guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, he always wanted me to be like this virginal creature, you know, like no one else, no one else could be, could touch. Like I had to keep everything very, my content on social media had to be real, reeled in. Mm-hmm. No more of those nude shots. No more of those nude shots. And even the the current profile, not the profile picture, but the current, because I gave him Eventually, I gave him my Facebook password because he needed to sell some things. And who cares? Like, if you're in a loving, trusting, you shouldn't have anything hidden from each other. Sure. Right? So, And I didn't have anything to hide. So uh, I gave him my Facebook password. And then he saw my profile picture, which is me doing stand-up, and then the lead picture for my Facebook page, which is me doing an exercise where I'm, like, crunched up in a yoga pose with a ball and he was like people are just gonna look at your ass on this one I'm like I'm in exercise clothes this is like it was that extreme that he want I was like all right I'll put on a muumuu and uh go in the dark and take that picture (laughs) that is the one I'll put up (laughs) yeah it was great and then he he has a son and his son is in Delaware and so we were trying to decide what we wanted to do after my lease was up in the Poconos uh where to move where to go and his twin brother was in is is in Texas and really nice human being really good family really like them a lot and his son, though, was here, was East Coast. But he has a problem with the with the baby mama. He's got a lot of baby mama drama. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what is his responsibility. And, you know, I don't, I'm not privy to that. But I was a witness to a lot of things where I was like, this woman is real challenging. Mm-hmm. It's weird that she doesn't want him involved. Like, it's, I, I've never been a parent. I've had stepchildren, but as a person who loves children, I could never imagine taking away the rights of a father who, like, severely loved their child. It really tortured him to not see his his son. It tortured him. But he worked where? Where was his home? His home office was in Plano. So he was in Texas? He was in Texas, technically, but he could have transferred anywhere. Oh. Because he worked for a big corporation. So then we decided, because he wanted to be near his twin brother, to stay in Texas. Got it. And so I shut up my whole life here. Yes. <laughs> Amazingly. <laughs> yeah. And then... Got a gig. I got a great gig at a place that I cannot ex- say without express written consent, and uh, or else you get sued big time. And... Moved there, started working, and within, I would say, one month, within one month, he got sick. Yeah, but you're forgetting all the stuff about wanting to have a baby. Oh, yeah. I mean, true love. You were ready to do that with this guy. Well, we got pregnant. Right. We got pregnant for, you knew this, for about six weeks. Right. And then we were not pregnant anymore because I'm old and have old eggs. And so that one was like, girl, I'm out. (laughs) Uh, I'm too rickety for this. And uh, so then I started to get on Clomid, uh, Clomiphene, which is, I think they call it Clomid first, which makes you ovulate. And then you can, you do that for like three to five months. Uh, And then after that, we started doing like full injections. That's a crazy roller coaster of emotions. And at that same time, he was living still partly in Texas and partly with me like he would have to fly home more often because it was a return to work time so he'd have to go into the office two days fly be with me for like five sometimes for two weeks and then fly back anyway but you're emotional like you're like have you ever seen those those videos of the (laughs) pregnant ladies and they're like you didn't give me the chicken tenders and now my life is over (laughs) and now everybody who knows Mara multiply that by (laughs) ten times (laughs) (laughs) yeah so that's when I decided that to stop all of that until we could like live in the same place so I was like I can't do this I am it's too much I have too much on my plate already to emotionally handle this by myself and be in just the but the idea that you wanted to have a child must 
means a lot that you really wanted to be with this guy forever. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a big freaking commitment. I knew within the first couple of weeks that I wanted to be with him forever. Is, do you just want me to cry, Marshall? <laughs> Don't blame me for this. Fucking dickhead. <laughs> me? The dickhead is not here anymore. I can't even, I can't even say he's a dickhead and I want to beat the dickhead. shit out of him. I can't even do that. I know. Ah, so you're in Dallas. You I'm, find a place. I find a place. I go. I fly out. Find a place. He's living in hotels until we find a place, and because his lease was up, or he lived with a girlfriend. Um, either one uh, will go with the latter, and I move there for him. I move there to be with him. Hold on for a minute. You knew that he had a girlfriend in Texas, Mm-mm. but he was living with his girlfriend. He was living with a woman, but. As soon as he moved in with her and then met me, he moved all of his things into the garage okay. and set up a garage apartment oh. and was still living in the same home with her, but never told her that they were no longer... Like, he wasn't communicative with her about them not being together. Okay. Which is wrong. Just say something and move out. Yes. Yes. But he was like a very proud person. Like he didn't want, he gave a lot of advice to people. Like he, like health advice, life advice. And it's like. <laughs> I got to laugh. <laughs> I feel like you should always look at those people that are giving you too much advice and be like, um, where's your <laughs> credibility on this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, they're, ugh. You guys know. Listen to the other episodes. There was another woman that claimed it was his girlfriend and wrote me some pretty nasty direct messages. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. One. And uh, and now who knows? You know who knows what the truth was anymore. So I moved there for him. He we shut down my place in the Poconos. Moved there. We started a life. We called each other husband and wife to everyone. Wow. I know. And in Texas, if you do that, it is true, because in Texas, that is the law, the common law, is uh, quick. It is. It's a, it, there's I'm no common time. common law with my person, but we it was so I mean, many years. 29 years. Yeah, this you could have like a second in the city in in Texas, and you're, you're like, this is me, and as long as you share a residence, share a bank account, and say it out loud, you are married. Oh, so you even had a shared bank account. We did. We had yeah, a I don't have a shared bank again. You don't? No. Nope. Well, we each had our own. Yeah, but then you had a shared. And then we had one shared. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised you did that. I I got real trusting on this one. I know, man. I got real, real, real deep trusting into this one. Yeah, when I heard that, I was kind of shocked. Well, I wanted all of our joint bills to be paid out of a joint account. We contribute equally to them, whether it's groceries or utilities or whatever it is, all that can come out of the joint account. Okay. And then if we have our own debt that we need to pay down, that can be paid out of our own account. He wasn't so good at that part, but... Uh... <laughs> so he was paying debt from the joint account? He was paying whatever he wanted from the joint account. I was like, you're not understanding the compartmentalization of the... Does this cause, did this cause fights and stuff or? No. It just I just let it go. Man, you this is so shocking to me. I know. I don't know what the fuck happened to you, girl. <laughs> I honestly don't. I know cuz I was really busting my ass. I was like flying back here to yeah. work, flying back still doing comedy and working full time for the Alboys K, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was insane. But I did, you know, once so I did finally take a look at our bank account. When he got sick. All right, just very quickly, let's go through the sick part. Mm -hmm. So he got sick, not COVID sick, but but something else happened? Yeah, well, we weren't sure what it was. He's always dealt with, like, Crohn's, and um, so we thought maybe it was a gallbladder situation. uh, But he had um, renal failure, so his kidneys and liver just kind of gave up the first time. Wow. Yeah, so before he even went into the hospital, his he started getting like these 
things on his shoulders. And he thought it was like a rash from the laundry detergent and stuff like that. So he thought he was having allergies. So he went into the doctor and was like, I have allergies. And so then they gave him more meds, which if you're going to go into renal failure, if you're on your way to renal failure, having more meds that your renal system has to metabolize isn't great. Like he was just taking all this stuff to fix all these things that weren't even associated. It wasn't even allergies at all. It was crazy. So he went into the hospital. <laughs> so he, the first night. We know if it means you can't shit or you're shitting. No, no, no. T- it's like your that? kidneys and your liver. All right. Okay. Your renal system. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> shit. Good, Marshall. Uh, so, um, but they did give him stuff to shit. Then he was there for a couple of days. He did let himself out of the hospital one night. He did against med- But when you have renal failure, you get all these horrible toxins go to your brain. And it's called hepatic endo something. I can't ever say the end of it. And it makes you make really bad choices. It makes you erratic. It makes you vicious. It makes you like all these things. That's why when you get drunk or whatever, it just like goes to your brain and it is a toxin on your brain. And that's why some people get mad and they, they're like angry drunks. It's because they can't metabolize and it shoots up to your brain. Anyway, first time he went to the hospital and then he got COVID while in the hospital. Was he vaxxed? He was vaxxed shortly before. Yeah. Did that take a long time to convince him to get vaxxed? Well, he couldn't go back into the office unless he was vaxxed. Okay. So he, it was like either that or lose his job, and he couldn't lose his job. So he got vaxxed. He got the J&J. You still need two shots of J&J in order for it to be worth anything. And it was only two weeks before he went in. So I did another show, and they were like, maybe it was the vax that, that did it. And I was like, God, you guys are fucking idiots. Uh uh, and so, and then somebody in my account like started. I can't believe you would say that. Like it was like a troll saying that. And then they and I just wrote to my friend. I was like, "Stop arguing with the trolls. Like it's not worth it. Just leave it." <laughs> and then he went back into the hospital because um, he wasn't feeling. Well, my aunt came over. My aunt was in town randomly. She's a hospice nurse, and she came over and she checked him and read over his entire chart and was like, you have to go back to the hospital. Like, you sound not great. And I even had him, she was like, you have to sit up, you have to do all these things. And um, I put him in the sunshine, I put him in front of a window, and that was a game changer because before he was laying in the guest room all curled up on his side, which was making it worse, you know, because you need blood flow. And then I took him back to the hospital and uh, on my break I like forced him to go I got home so that was Sunday that my aunt came over and then Monday I had to work early and I had a break from 9 until noon so I ran home and I was like get up we're going back to the hospital and I went downstairs to shove some food in my face while he got ready and went back upstairs. He was like shaving. He was doing like all this manicuring his chest, like his chest and everything. And I was like, and he was sitting Indian style looking forward. And I was just like, he looked like a little baby. He looked like a toddler. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Put your clothes on. We're going back to the hospital because he was puking up like a bucket of blood it was just oh my god yeah it was a lot i even brought a pair of socks with me that has blood all over the front of it that he had used and i pulled out my sock and i was like nice good job good packing (laughs) so it was really hard to get him back to the hospital but we got there and then he sat down he really wanted a drink of water but like he tested positive. They put him back in a room. And then he was like, I really want to drink a water. Fuck. And he just started getting very angry about it. And so the nurse was like, I think you should go so I can manage this. I am. This is what my training comes in. And I was like, OK, because it was getting a little scary. I was surprised they allowed you in because of COVID. I know. Well, then they took me away to get tested. Oh, OK. Also. And then he went up to a different level of the hospital 
then he told me it was really rough and they told me I couldn't come see him. So I stayed home and then I text him. He texted me where the room was and I said, I guess I have to stay here for the night. And then the next day that I showed up, he was intubated and put under on a coma. From that point to the end, how long was it? Because I couldn't figure that out. Five and a half weeks. Were you allowed into the hospital at all? So I could go into the ICU waiting room. Oh, yeah, but we, I saw pictures of you in the room with him. When was that, at the tail 21 end? days after he got admitted. Oh. So that was when he would not be contagious anymore. Got it. Until then, I, su- I set up an iPad so I could FaceTime into the room. Because when they're in a coma, they can still hear you. So, God, this is hard. You're going to get through it. Okay. Uh, so I would just, I couldn't sleep. I still can't sleep. And I would just go and FaceTime him from like, I would sleep at home from 9 until about 11.30 midnight. And then I would go and they would set it up. And I would talk to him till I had to go to work the next day at 4.30 in the morning. And then I would just go to work. And then I would come back after every break. And then he got to the point where we could go in. And he was still under. And then they were going to trach him. It's not good for you to be intubated, like, down your throat for a long time. And you always get pneumonia because of that. So... He had his renal failure that he was dealing with, and then he had COVID, the not great kind, which also leads to renal failure. Oh. Yeah. So maybe he had it all along. Like, we still can't get anything from the first place that we went to. Anyway, then we went to, do you want to hear all this? No, I want to know. I want to get to the discovery point. (laughs) What discovery? Where the shit came out. Oh. All the things that you found out. (laughs) Isn't that what we're here for? Oh, okay. I mean, I get it, man. You love the guy. He gets really sick. You're losing him, it looks like. Well, I didn't know I was losing him. Well, by all the pictures, it didn't seem good. I know, but I always have hope. Okay. I never really thought he was going to die. Really? Never once. I, I thought it was starting to get bad when I saw the nude picture. Oh, you know. Oh, that was after. Okay, the so. The moment I saw that fucking nude picture, I called up one of your dear friends, who's my friend, <laughs> and I said, uh-oh, she's fucked. She's take, she's doing nude pictures again. You better okay, call well, her Okay, well, I was up. pissed. Yeah. Okay, so. So where'd that come from? What happened <laughs> in between this? Well, this one, okay, so. Craziness. So we share, like, his iPad gets shot up to the TV screen, so. Uh, we share that. That's like a, it's like a family iPad, and I opened it up, and because his brother was telling me stories about his previous relationships, and that made me curious about my own with him, and I discovered some indiscretions, and that was rough, you know. And I also discovered that he's not great with money, especially my own. So. I was illegally airbnb my Poconos rental, and I was saving all of that in our joint account so that when I moved there, it would be available and we would have like a little cushion until we got into a good rhythm. And um, I never checked the account. Everyone ch- always check all of your accounts. All the money was gone. Where was it going to? I honestly have, I think he helped some, he would just give, like, if anybody asked him for a dollar, he would give a thousand. And he wanted to come off as someone that could give, that would always be able to give. And he just also didn't have those resources. So when I made those resources sort of available, Mm -hmm. even though they were not his to give, he gave them, you know? out. So he's doing some loosey goosey things and all of my money is gone. And I find all of this out in about four hours, the second day that he was in a coma. (laughs) So maybe I got drunk and wrote a long nasty post about, it wasn't nasty. That was a crazy post. It was just crazy. It was honest. Yeah. It was just a crazy post. And I was the first to say, take that down. (laughs) Immediately. I posted it at midnight. Don't worry, I got in a lot of trouble with 
one of his siblings a lot of trouble. I posted it and then you emailed me and I immediately took it down. But it was only up for like five hours. Okay. But it, within that five hours. <laughs> that, that was a mar- it got some that exposure. That was a mar- rage <laughs> that I know very well. Also, I feel like for what I discovered, that was tame as a response. Oh, yeah. I- that was tame. I was ready to fucking kill the guy. He was, That's worse than George. I thought. Yeah. Big time. Don't you think it was worse than George? Yeah. Drew, yeah. It was like crazy worse. I mean, he was hot, he's hotter than George. So, I mean, so he gets like a little leeway, but. <laughs> yeah, I just. So I'm down in fucking Texas for this guy who's now in a coma, who I find out my life is completely destroyed and he's dying. So what the fuck do I do? It's an unbelievable story. I have a file on my laptop that says Dave's indiscretions with everything that I found because I just mirrored it to myself. But I'm not going to look in it, obviously, unless I need to. But I'm not going to. Anyway, so I send this. Ugh, I got in so much trouble for that post from his sister. He was like, you don't protect Dave. I was like, what about fucking me? What are you, what are you fucking talking about? Are you kidding me? I know. Like, After they're responding to you? Yeah. It was crazy. So whoever, so somebody screenshot that to her. So someone that follows me mm-hmm. screenshot it to her. And instead of being like, oh, this poor girl that got run through the mud. I'm going to make her life hell by talking shit about her and sending it to someone who also will make her life more hell. No wonder he got he got himself into the predicament that he got in. It's like, I don't get along with his sister now. And he was always seeking her approval. And even after his death, she will not give it. It's so fucked. Yeah, it's, crazy. it's like, th- get over your fucking self. Yeah. It was so cruel. So, yeah, it was, ugh. Then you got into this place where, forgive. I did. <laughs> yeah. It was, where the fuck did that come from? I mean, that, yeah. So I was very mad, and I found everything that I needed to find. Every, there was every single bit of truth laid out in front of me for me to see. And I had to make a decision. And so, and I packed up all of his things and I put them in the garage. And then I was like, I'm, I'm, I forgive him. Because when you're sick, you don't make choices that are of sound mind. So, and fuck, I've made some really fucking horrible decisions in my life that sometimes none of my like people that I thought were my friends just ditched me like when I got when I was going a little crazy after my second divorce I went a little crazy and then someone else who was a host on the show uh, for a short while wrote the nastiest things about how I was going crazy instead of like pulling me aside and being like hey I'm worried about you Mm -hmm. she was like this girl's gone off the rails, like a nasty post, which is whatever. And in times when you need someone to just have grace, that's your choice. Like, and I think maybe I went through that so I could have compassion and love and and just forgive him. So I wrote this long thing to his family and I said, here's what I've decided. I'm not moving his things out. I have forgiven him, and I think all of our primary purpose and our primary goal is to work towards Dave getting better and getting healthy, and that's all I'm going to focus on. And that's it. And then they all wrote back nice things, and then his parents moved in with me while he was getting better and then worse, and um, yeah. So there, there were points that he was getting better and you guys were optimistic about it? He got better. One time I thought he was telling me to get the fuck out because, like, we were talking. And because they pulled, he got extubated. He couldn't really speak because you can't speak because your esophagus is fucked after that for a while. Yeah. 
And so he was trying to, I was like, whisper it again, but slowly. And I was like, uh, can I, and then you learn to spell out the words. So it's a long process. And then I go, you f- get fuck out. And then he goes, I go, do you want me to get the fuck out? And he was like, oh God, like you, you can see it was really, and I go, and then he, I was like, oh, you want me to get you the fuck out? And he's like, yes. Like he would shake his head. Yes. And that is what, that haunts me. I always wonder, like, what if I did just get him the fuck out of there myself? Like, what if, like, I could have, maybe, like, I could have saved him. Like, I think about all the things that I could have done different, that I would have made choices differently, and maybe it would have saved him. (sighs) Why was he being kept in the hospital then? Okay, so... You, he couldn't walk. He couldn't move his limbs on his own. Because he got astrophy because he was in bed all the time? Yeah. He lost like 70 pounds, 68 pounds. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Did they turn him every day? You know. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Did and he get bed sores and stuff? He did. And then the physical therapist came in and they don't work with him unless they can sit up on the side of the bed and... They teach you how to do it until he can sit up on the side of the bed. And so, like, I would I would hold his foot and I'd be, like, push against my hand with your toes, push against my hand. And then we got to the point where I was like, he goes, I want to sit up in, in a, like, eyeball, blank mouthing. And I was like, do you want to sit up? And then he would shake his head, yes. And so then I would pull him up and I would have him hold it. And then just kind of lay him back down. But he could hold it for like a second. And I was thinking that that would be great for him because he had pneumonia still. And you can't get rid of pneumonia unless you move around. Like you need all that. You need movement to get rid of everything that's in your body. So, I mean, we got to that point. And then I had a talk with him about everything. About everything? About everything. And I told him that I don't want him to worry about any of it. I was like, I know, I know everything. I was like, and I, I well, know what about. What made you do that? Is that was for you? No, it was because I feel like he's always been so tortured in his life, and that's why he made the decisions that he made. And if he could find anybody to just completely understand him and love him despite all of that and know that I actually knew him as he was and still loved him incredibly that maybe it would give him some peace in his heart so he could just not be so tortured and he could focus on getting better instead of thinking okay once I get out of this I still have this hell life that I have to deal with You know what I mean? Yes, totally. So we would pray and sing. Like he loved this one Catholic song on Eagle's Wings, which is so weird. Um, But mostly because he didn't know the words and he was singing it one time. And I looked over at him and I was like, that is not the word. Those are not the words at all. (laughs) So I'd sing that to him in the hospital and he would squeeze my hand and like move his fingers to the music. And I thought he, I thought he was coming back. But maybe there's those moments where, you know, you always hear about it where people have so much clarity before they pass. Yep, absolutely. And maybe that was it. Maybe those were the times. But it was a lot longer but maybe he was supposed to hear me say that it was okay that all the things that happened it's okay you know if if I love you despite it all and I was able to do that and he could say my name really yeah at the very end I have a video of me because I was I was journaling every day so I was taking videos every day and I for like when he got better I would wanted him to have Like, here's what happened through the whole thing. There's the good, the bad, the ugly. And uh, I even po I like, it was all positive. And I was like, all right, enough of the bullshit. I was like, here's some ugly stuff. 
So I wanted to have video of every day for him. And it's just on my fucking phone. And every time I go, like, I have booked a few gigs and they're like, oh, I need a bio and headshot. And I have to spin past it. <laughs> and every time I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> God, this was a very, I didn't think I was going to cry this much. This was a really weird situation. Yeah. Don't you think? Guy you love, he gets sick. You find out all this trash about him. Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision yeah. how to respond. And you go the the human route, the empathetic route, which I honestly find amazing. I don't know if I could have done it that way. I responded to this like, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> get the fuck out of that apartment. Get those parents the fuck away from here. That's my, because I was pretty. I think there were a lot of people who were protective of you. Like, right. did a lot of people respond the way I responded? Or they were like, no, Mar, you got to forgive. You Most gotta... people didn't have a judgment about how I should do it. Most people said, it's incredible the choice that you made. I agree. I never thought that there was an alternate choice. Like, I've never, I'm very indecisive as a human. And uh, I, it was like, this is the path. This is it. And when I got to talk to him and I was like, you know that I love you still very much. And he was like, yes. And then he held both my hands and squeezed them. And then and I was like, I love you all the way to the moon. And he would always say, and I love you to the moon. I love you all the way back. And he was like, he just went back. And I was like, oh, my God. And that just crushed. I was like, yeah, I'll, I would I would do it all over again. I would live through all of that just to have him back. As, as he is, I would take it all back. You would have stayed. If he lived, I would have stayed. And maybe that's why he didn't. Because I keep getting dealt these hands and I'm not learning. <laughs> well, I mean... That becomes the bigger issue. Yeah. But I think you're a very trustful person. I know. I don't and, and that, I don't get that. Yeah. After <laughs> eight times <laughs> and the cheats. We need content for this podcast. The, the you know? money stuff that is weird that you were you could get you know, you're you're a successful person. Mm -hmm. You you I always felt like you were in charge of the economics of your life, and I mean, it's amazing that you. I d I do didn't feel want to like put a fucking hand through his, you know, his face one time just to. <laughs> but then he was he was you know he's sick and I don't know it's tough to do that when they're down and out. Yeah, I guess you never know what you're gonna do until you're put into that situation, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. So where do you go from here? I'm minute by minute, you know. I'm uh I can't stay in the house because I like I sleep on cushions on the floor because I can't go to my bedroom and which is great, really healthy. I can't sleep, so also great. But what I did do, I bought a teardrop trailer and I'm going <laughs> to renovate it. This sounds like somebody we knew. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm doing it to make money. What do you mean? I need like a I need like a hands on Bob Vila project. Okay. So I'll show you. Where is my phone? Who knows? But it's an it's an old vintage trailer that needs love. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna renovate it and then sell it. I bought it for two grand and you can sell those suckers for forty. Wow. Yeah. Do you have someone to do it for you? Yeah. You're looking at her. You're gonna <laughs> Another thing to add to your resume now. You didn't see that I, I, when I lived in the Poconos, I built a bar. I built all those shelves well, I myself. All that shit, yeah. I yeah. Can, that, you just apply to the inside of this tiny little trailer. Okay. I was, you would be so, so, so proud of me because originally, <laughs> originally I was going to buy a, like a busted tiny house that was like pretty big and redo that and have it like craned out and moved and all this stuff. And then and then I was like, you know what, maybe I should start smaller. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so 
I bought a teardrop trailer. Now, if you guys don't know what a teardrop trailer is, I'll look it up. They're fucking adorable. Um, but you can, I'll, I'll post it on my Instagram. And it's sitting somewhere in Plano, Texas. Well, it's in Gunter, Texas, by this, uh, on this guy's property, but it's going to be in my garage on Sunday. I drove an hour out and I was like, no, 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 because it was, as soon as I got off the regular streets, it was so fucking dark. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in like Texas, Texas. I'm in like Texas, yeah. Texas. Don't fuck around part of Texas. Yes. And then the whole time I was like, okay, this is why people want to get guns. Because yeah. in this moment, right? <laughs> I was like, I should definitely have a gun. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got it for us. I stole it because um, that guy also kicked it that used to own it. And uh, I bought it off his estate. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks. Wow. I'll show you the pictures. It's cool. Yeah. So where's Happy Never After going? Okay, so I guess we're back to ground zero. We are in the bottom of the World Trade Center here. We are rebuilding. We're going to talk... Grief. We're going to talk about fucked up grief because this is fucked up. Like, I can't even. Do I have the right to be mad at him? I don't know. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't much matter now. Like, right. If you stay mad, it's not going to take you anywhere. But there are a lot it helps of, me get through my workouts right, the mad part you fucking banging and hitting and jumping and <laughs> all the all the uh, it's me and a bunch of dude trainers and they all go it's so funny to watch you work out because every guy as soon as you start walking towards a piece of equipment that you want every guy runs the, uh, so far away they're so scared of you that is crazy <laughs> okay i have a question yes everywhere okay anyone that knows what's happened in mm-hmm. texas the women this one thing I do hate is when they pity you. Like, ugh. Yes. I'm like, God, Fuck stop. Up. I don't, ugh. ugh. I'm okay. So every man goes, you know what? You just need to get fucked. Or they talk to me about how they want to have sex. Or they talk to, or they, not with me. Or they talk about sex in general. Like they try to dip their toe in the sex talk. And I'm like, what is it about me? That's like, I want to talk about fucking all the time, if do I or I want to fuck because right now I got a busted moldy trailer that that's all I think about and I Google, I watch YouTube videos until three in the morning and then I sleep for an hour and then I go to work and I'm I, there's more joy in my heart <laughs> with that than anything. I'm like I don't have there's zero sex on my mind right now. I'd rather burn somebody's dick off than put it inside me. (laughs) That's a good idea. (laughs) I don't know. Did they see your social media or something? I don't, you know, you're a a, a semi-sexual person prior to Dave. I mean. Prior to Dave, but they didn't know me before Dave. I don't know where that comes from. Maybe it's just another fucking stereotype, babe. You're a beautiful looking woman. They work out. Who the fuck knows what these guys? They're also in Texas. <laughs> you know? I don't know if that's happening in New York City, but it's Texas. It's like but guys, th- it's been a month, okay? But there are a lot of women out there, like have this extreme, like the yeah. death part. But there's so many. I would imagine so many women out there have been fucked by men. Oh yeah. And there's there needs to be a voice. And there's a bunch of, of men that also have been fucked by women. So yeah, but. You, you can don't go care. both ways. But I don't give a shit. That's not, <laughs> I don't necessarily believe that's very true. I think there's a little bit of that, and maybe it's my. Let own. me propose this to you, and maybe the listeners can can chime in. What would we think about changing this to happily ever after? And we do bring in women that have gone through crazy. Like, give us your craziest fucking story, but also, what did we learn? What are we doing now? How do we pull ourselves up off of our from, from our bootstraps, or our heels, our stilettos, and get the fuck back out there, like in the world, and actually get to? So uh, there was this crazy thing that happened when I was driving his burial outfit and all of his memorial stuff, all the photos, everything. I drove it from Texas to 
New York. So his family would have some, like, so we would have a nice funeral, right? I was driving through that tornado. Holy shit. Yes. And I was driving with it because I was like, why is it so, like, move our, because the weather usually moves the other way. Yeah. And I didn't look at any weather. I was, I was grieving. I was a grieving wife, you know, I was a widow. And uh, I pull over, I didn't want to stop. I pull over uh, because Christy Cielo, I text her because we had been texting. She just recently lost her mom. And so she was checking in on me. I'm not going to cry through this. I'm not. Mm -mm. Nope. There. Good pep talk. Okay. So I text her. So what do you think about God now? Like, after, and she wrote me like nine responses and I was driving. And so it was buzzing in my lap. And you know, when you get curious and totally. so, but I also am not a bad driver. So I, I was like, I'll get off at the next exit, get gas. I can read these. And the gas station, for some reason, I didn't pull into the gas station. I pulled into an empty lot across the street. I was like, you can read them, close your eyes for a few minutes, and then get back on the road. You have more than a half a tank. Okay, let's do this. So I read her response. We t talked a little bit back and forth about God. And I was like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just having a moment. I'm questioning. Close my eyes for six minutes. Open my eyes because there was like a homeless dude walking towards the car. But he was maybe 25 yards away. So I, I was like, okay, we're and we're out. Drove around him, got back on the freeway, immediately had to stop because there was two semi-trucks parked. I park right behind him and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Sit there for four and a half hours. Whoa. Yes. I thought I was going to run out of gas. Sit behind these two semi trucks for four and a half. I got out of the car, let Frank out of the car while it was raining. I had so much time. I was like stretching, moving around. It clears. The tornado had just gone through when I got off the freeway. It threw a semi truck across the other side of the freeway and into the top of the woods, like on top Holy of the woods. Shit. There was a tree that went all the way through an F-350, so like a dually. It went all the way through. There were 57 other trees that had come down onto the freeway that they had to clear, and that's why it took almost five hours to clear it. And then I immediately, like as soon as I started driving, I immediately knew what happened. And I was like, all right, I get it, God. You're real. So what the <laughs> fuck is my purpose? Like, why? Just tell me. So it was like one of those moments. It was crazy. Wow. I do like that idea. Like, I always saw it, women or men coming on and just telling their story. But I think what's more important is, okay, how did I get through it? Mm -hmm. Which is a positive ending to this. Yeah. I like that idea. We need positive endings because this pandemic has been fucking bullshit and it's so depressing and everything that's going up on entertainment is so depressing. It's like all these all these fucking actors and actresses that have these big, big, huge deals that live in these big mansions are like, let me write something so horrible and dark. You're like, you live in a mansion. <laughs> Just <laughs> give me a happy ending. I need something to hang on to. Yeah. So you know what? Fuck it. We're going to do it here. That's a great idea. That. Thank you. We have to figure out a way how to get them to communicate like their story and then be able to come on your show. I do feel like I'm divinely connected to whatever my plan or purpose is right now. Some weird shit has been happening. So I do feel like these. I will get connected with these ladies. So okay. if you are listening and you know of someone or if it is you, please write to me. Write to me on my Instagram. I look at all the messages. And for everyone that listens and for everyone that messages me on Instagram, I love you guys. I'm crying again. What a fucking pussy. Uh, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much. There's been a couple of people. Actually, Haley, I would love to have you on. And Chris, I would love to have you on also. I know you know who you are. Um, you guys went through... A lot. So if you would love to be on and share your story, please write to me or you can write me at my email, which is also 
on my Instagram or on Facebook. I don't use the public side of my Facebook too often, but I will look at my messages, I promise. Or you can email me directly at marajmerrick at gmail.com. That's Mara, my first name, J as in Jennifer, but just the J, Merrick at gmail.com. And share the share the pod with someone that you know that's gone through just the trenches and is and maybe they're still in the trenches and they need a little light out. Sometimes when you're down there, you don't see the light and you need somebody to give you a hand. So, yeah. All right. Welcome back. It's great having you back, Mara. <laughs> Thanks. This was tough. All right. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> Oh, wait, we do have a new sponsor and thank God for her because uh, it is right now it's collagen. If uh, I'm going to put a link on my Instagram and then once the website's changed, I'll have it up there. But uh, they do have a bunch of products that help with the puffiness of the eyes because I was like, every time I cry, I get these huge bags. And uh, so we have new skin as our sponsor. And so anything that you purchase from there, it really helps us out. So I will put the link up on our website and you can go check out all the products and I will make sure to get you guys some specials on there. So special pricing for you guys because you are all special people. All right. Love you guys. Make sure to check out everything at Be Frank and I will be back and be very consistent. Talk to you next week. Bye. Thanks, Marsh.